face it, they had not a whole lot you could do with Tony's. And you didn't have 25, or 25, hell, you, you got, what, 500 channels. Now we had three. Depends <laughs> on how good your antenna was to pick those all up. And we were fortunate enough we could pick up, I believe it was channel 13 is what it was, out of Memphis that carried it. And uh, so we, you know, as a family, uh, I come from a family of just five boys. There was no girls. So <laughs> you can imagine what my mom, she, she would have been a hell of a referee. Tell you for sure. She, she, back then, you got to remember the rest of the business was designed in territories. You, uh, that was one territory. But you go to other territories and you see people like you come to Florida, it was Dusty. He was the one that everybody, or Eddie Graham, they were the ones that everybody knew in Florida. You go to, uh, to Atlanta, that was wrestling too, and, and, and people like that. And you go up in the Carolinas, you get into Paul Jones and uh, Johnny Valentine. Johnny Weaver and, and people like this. Each each area, you know, when, when Vince was running, as Vince Senior was running New York, uh, you got Bruno San Martino. I mean, he was he was the man. He, so I said, well, I'll try it out, Doug. So we went out there and I locked up with him, and he gave me his head like a fool. Well, I took out head and I said stuff on him. Next thing I know, I felt that big old hand grab me right here in the tights. Now this would be his left hand got him where he'd have to reach out with his left hand. He grabbed me by the tights, and I was just like this. I did not do any jump. I didn't do nothing. And I was right at 300 pounds at that time. Next thing I know, I'm like this. I'm looking down at Andre. And I laughed. I said, anything you want, big man. <laughs> Our job was to make people believe in what you was doing. Now, did people get hurt? Oh, God. I went to a, uh, a legend's meeting a couple of years, four or five months ago, whatever it was. And I walked in and saw some of these people that we've already mentioned. They're either on walkers, they're in wheelchairs, uh, or they need to be on walkers. And why is that? It was the pounding that they body took. So many people say, well, you know, you fall, blah, blah, you know how to fall. <laughs> well, my question is, knowing how to fall, what the hell are you talking about? Well, Back then, they all had this old good boy. I don't go to your area, you don't come to mine. And that worked for a long time. But something happened. And I was fortunate enough to be there at Channel 17. When cable first came out, Channel 17 was the first one out of Atlanta. And it was going nationwide. You get it on cable. So I went out to Portland. Uh, when I got there, this guy named Don Owens was the promoter. Hills was myself. And by the way, Dutch Savage renamed me up there, which in a way I liked it, in a way I didn't. I wish I might have stayed with it. He called me Sam Oliver Bass, the SOB. The only reason I didn't like it, but Sam Bass, who had managed me and Donnie a little bit, had just got killed in the car wreck. And so I didn't really want to take that over. But being out there, I didn't think he'd get down here too much. So I took it. And so there, I was Sam Oliver Bass up there. And I was a Northern Heavyweight Champion. So we're coming back home. We was over Eugene, which is 100 miles out of Portland. All of a sudden, the rear engine starts sputtering. The plane jumps like this. Oh, no. And the engine quits. And I'm sitting up here in the co-pilot's plane. Boy, this co-pilot, he's aware doing everything. He finally got it feathered off, and so the front engine's covers. He says, we're all right. The front engine's going to take us in. So he's, I'm hearing him on the radio. He's calling in emergencies and all this kind of stuff. I looked around and I said, you know what, this just might be it. He and Dusty, I was sitting beside Dusty. Kevin Sullivan, Mike Graham, Magnum T.A., Barry Wyndham, Vitek Mulligan. I forget who else was on there. We had an old twin-engine beach craft. We used, there was two of them. One was an old blue and old red. And I forget which one we were on. We were just taking off and coming up out of uh, this airport right here, just up over the bay. I'm sitting here talking to Dusty, and he's looking at me, and all he says, damn. I said, what? He said, look. I look out, and there's just smoke coming right by us off the engine. I look up there, and this pilot, boy, he's fighting, and he's drenched wet with sweat. Talk about cow fired ears. First time that Brad Armstrong had a ring up in Pensacola. Man, uh, Randy Rose against him and uh, his dad. Boy, he come out, he made his big comeback, and Wow! 
But what he got, you know, the, that son of a gun was swelled out like this. Now, I'm thinking, do I want my ear to be like, you know, they're child's fired now that I heard. I'm taking care of it. But I said, no, I'm going to have this drained. You know, that's, that's a painful situation. I had just met him with roommates out in L.A., and I had just left there and went to the uh, Oklahoma Territory. Lonnie got killed. Uh, in fact, uh, my ex-wife and his wife were, were, were super friends, and I still remember now when, when Sue called and told us about Lonnie, and uh, what a shame. Uh, he, he used to tell me that he wasn't going to be an old man. He wouldn't ever be an old man. And he said, Lonnie, why do you say that? And, and I can remember many times on trips, especially out there in L.A., he, he told me, I won't be here now. Say that, and after that happened, I remember all those things. Well, let me back up on that reason we went there. We were down here in Florida. Dusty was the promoter. It was me and Dusty and Barry Wyndham, Mike Rotundo, Mike Bart, uh, Humper Dink, uh, JJ Dillon. We were down here. We had a big show down in Miami called Lord of the Rings. Biggest house by the Dusty got concerned about the payoff we all got. He cost me a lot of money. <laughs> Mulligan, I, I like Jack. Jack's a good guy. But boy, Jack was flaky sometimes. Oh, yeah, you know, they were always setting it up, man. We were, we were already been talking about it. In fact, we were going to blame Frank White Bart's wife in to be my valet. She was a little rough. You know, she could do our she, she could shoot with me and all this kind of stuff. We would already talked about how we was going to bring her in. She's going to be my valet and all this kind of stuff and work against Jack. But that good Jack gets there and he's doing the, uh, Jack's smokehouse and all that. I mean, he's having a big push. And he got mad because, uh, let me tell you something, folks. Me and Miss Betsy, there might be a little bit of snow on the roof, but there's still a lot of fire in the kitchen, baby. So if we come your way, you better get out of the way. We're coming.